Well, we live now to Cape Town. Our reporter, Artyom Tungana, who's been following the story for us. Arty, good afternoon to you. I mean, people queuing there, they've been told that they won't get the disability grant unless they reapply. Sasa clearly, from what we can see, doesn't have the capacity to allow them to reapply. They queue overnight, and now they get sprayed by a water cannon. Very worrying scenes, Stephen, that came out this morning in Belleville. This is the Belleville Sasa office where a lot of people from various other communities have had to flock to due to the fact that various other Sasa offices which assist the bigger ones have closed due to COVID-19. Many of them have had in the previous years or in the previous months have had to access Sasa through their community offices and the mobile offices. I was just speaking to some of uh, the regional managers of Sasa in the Western Cape and they were telling me that they have over 160 mobile services which would ordinarily be taken to the people in the communities so they can avoid traveling and flocking at one main office. So all of those have been closed in the advent of COVID-19 and so people have had to then have no option but to actually travel and come to uh, some of these offices that do remain open for uh, Sasa recipients to be able to try to access. And uh, Stephen, the staff members themselves have also not been operating as per usual due to COVID-19. Of course, they're operating at 50% staff capacity. That, of course, also due to the fact that the country and the world really is still grappling with COVID-19. But, of course, uh, the situation where people have had to be sprayed with water cannons by the police, the minister also saying that she does doesn't want to see those kind of scenes unfold again uh, something that they didn't want to happen or to see happening and she has actually admitted that they did not look at the situation for what it is because many of the questions uh, that we've been asking the authorities here is that could they have not seen this coming haven't seen what has been happening with the whole social uh, grants debacle did they not see this coming? Why did they not prepare ahead of time? She admitted that they failed in this regard. Hence, you see the huge numbers of people flocking from the various communities at which they would ordinarily try to access their social grants through. It's quite something, Arti. I mean, from the moment over the weekend it emerged that this grant was being stopped for 200,000 people, I think 53,000 of them live in the Western Cape. I mean, it was clearly foreseeable. It really looks like... The Sasa offices, the Department of Social Development, didn't seem to understand what was going to happen. Very true, Stephen. In fact, I'm just going to move out of shot so my colleague can actually show you while I speak to you the number of people that still remain. These uh, Sasa beneficiaries have been here since the early hours of this morning. Many of them have been here since Monday already. Some of them saying that they've had to sleep over here. Similarly to what we saw in Guguletu, that's another branch. There's about 16 Sasa offices in the Western Cape with over 160 mobile services that they would try to use uh, alternatively but have since been closed as well uh, due to the fact that uh, the country is going through uh, a pandemic. So these people, Stephen, are people who are very much aware of the fact that some of their grants have had to be cancelled. They are very aware of how the systems work. Uh, they are saying that they've had no other option but to come physically at some of these Sasa offices because they don't have access to online. Uh, the minister and the CEO were highlighting how they would have to now go digital because this whole issue of people coming physically here poses a huge COVID-19 risk to an extent where police have had to, like you said, fire water cannons just to disperse them. These are people who are already sick. These are people who are living with chronic illnesses. These are people living with disabilities, tempor temporal disabilities who have had to be sprayed by the police with water. I mean, that on its own is obviously deemed as inhumane. But I think some of the measures that the minister and the CEO spoke about need to really be implemented as quickly as possible to try and avoid a situation like this where people gather in these huge numbers, uh, of course, posing a very, very high risk for the contraction and the spreading of COVID-19 in the Western Cape, which already has high numbers of COVID-19 active cases, Stephen.
Artyom Tungana, thanks very much indeed for that live update. Just a very traumatic story, in fact, to see people queuing up like that and then in the end with that kind of result. Artie, thank you. We're going to be watching that very closely.